Are you looking for a better way to manage your smart home? Do you want to be able to use any computer when you need to make a change? Well, stay tuned. I'm going to show you how to do this with Proxmox VE. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about should you use Proxmox VE to control your smart home? Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links available. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you want to get notified when new content is uploaded, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. Now here's what we're going to be covering in this video, and that's should you use Proxmox VE in your smart home. Well, first we're going to go over what is Proxmox, in case you haven't heard about it. Then we're going to talk about ways you can use Proxmox, and then we'll actually go about installing Proxmox. If you saw my earlier video on setting up PFSense, then this slide will look pretty familiar to you. If you haven't looked at it, look at the link right up here, and that will help bring you up to speed on what we're doing. This is a simplified diagram of a smart home network, and maybe the one you're kind of evolving into, if not something to think about. We've got all the different pieces of the pie here that you've looked at. We've got NAS, we've got Plex, we've got Pi-hole, we've got firewalls out the wazoo. But there's another step that we need to look at. So let's go ahead and drop out that and then we'll get this moved over here to give us a little more room. And we're going to talk about something called Proxmox or you may hear it called Proxmox VE. And what this is, is a server and this is going to be what we call a type one hypervisor where this is bare metal install, much like VMware. And then you've got your type two hypervisors like Windows Server, where you have to actually install Windows Server and then you set up the hypervisor, at least as of the last time I dealt with Windows. Now this is gonna be type one and it's just minimal what you've got to get up and running so that you can start doing things. And what does this do is that instead of having to have individual servers for everything, you can take one server and you can set up a virtual machine and that's a software presentation of an actual machine, but you don't have all the duplicate hardware. and you can have another one and another one and you see where this is going. But here's a different angle that we're going to be dealing with on this one. We're going to use this as a management workstation, as an information collection point. And then we start that process by something called React OS. And that is an open source Windows clone. And we'll be using that so that you don't have to have a dedicated machine or make sure that nobody gets is borrowing your laptop and then suddenly you can't do things in the smart home or they make a change and then your stuff quits working. We're going to have this set up so that you can jump to a virtual machine, have everything you need and you're good to go. But that, but as they say, there's more. We're also going to look at Android OS. It is not uncommon for some of the smart home applications to have an app that configures them and manages them, but you've got no web equivalent to do that. Well, some of us may not want to put that on our phone or Again, you're, we're trying to get this all into a central management console and using Android OS will potentially give us, now not all apps may work, but it gives you the potential of having now two different platforms. You'll have a Windows platform, Android platform, so you've got probably most everything covered that you may run into for the most part. And then we'll look at things like Linux. There's all sorts of possibilities. You can use this to kick the tires on a new operating system before you do it. But my whole thought with this is using React OS so we don't have to get yet another Windows license. And it's just something worth trying because I'm trying to do things as budget friendly as I can within the video. Now we're going to get into the actual getting the hardware ready for Proxmox. Now, this is the same hardware that I use for PFSense. So if you looked at the earlier video that I had linked up here, then you'll see the exact system I'm using, except in this case, what I could get available was a 256 gig SSD, six gigs of memory. So we may have to add some more memory at some point, but this gives us a compact, quiet platform. And that's what I'm striving to is having as compact as we can. Now we may have to add some more memory, but you know, we can deal with that. What we want to do is go into the BIOS setup and set the boot order. I'm going to set mine up so that the US, if a USB key is installed, it will default to that. If it's not, then we will go to the hard drive that should be in there. That will get us pretty much to where we can do what we want. But I always want to have it so that the USB key will default. I'll override this by default and auto power on. That's fine. We want to leave that I, until virtualization is enabled. Good. We want to have that. 
VTD. Don't think we're going to need that at this point because we're not talking a heavy use situation. And it looks like we're set, ready to go. So we will just do select save changes, reset, and then we'll actually get started with the installation. Now what we need to do is get Blaina Etcher up and running and get that Proxmox VE ISO burned to a USB so we can go ahead and get it installed. So we'll select flash from file and we'll select Proxmox. We'll go to the target and select our verbatim. And you can see I'm going to use a 16 gig so you don't have to have anything huge. So we'll click on select and then we'll go to flash and then we'll just wait for this to get finished. Okay, now that we've got all this finished, we're going to sit there and close out Blaine Etcher. We'll unplug the USB drive since Blaine Etcher normally always dismounts it. And we'll plug it back in. And then we'll click on my computer to see if it sees anything, which it may not. Okay, it sees something there, but this is using a format that Windows doesn't understand. So, okay, now we'll move on to the next step and get this installed. As you are installing your latest smart home device, Grab a copy of my smart home checklist. This will help you record information about each device as you set it up. This will prove helpful when you need to find out where to get the firmware updates from or support on that device. You will be subscribed to my email list in exchange for the checklist. I won't share, rent, or sell your information to anyone. Well, now I've got the USB drive we just burned Proxmox onto in the AWOW box we're going to use. I've got it turned on. We'll let it come up and then we should start seeing the install process. Bingo! Went to exactly where we wanted it to. So we'll say install Proxmox VE. And what's supposed to happen with this one is we're going to have the drive that Proxmox is on also be able to store some of the VMs. Although eventually at some point I may add some outboard storage just to be on the safe side so that I can have some storage to back up some of the VMs that are not currently running or the source ISO files. So we'll let this run. We'll just see how it proceeds. Should be pretty straightforward. I will let this come up on DHCP initially because I'm gonna have to move this to another network and I don't want to try to hard code something in there right now. And we'll scroll down here and read the message. Fine, we'll click on agree. We are going to, it's going to automatically partition. That's fine. Please verify the installation target. Okay, that's what it should be. Automatic hardware detection, graphical interface. Sounds like a winner to me. Let's go ahead and get this party started. We will select United States, which works for me. Then we will select Chicago, which is the nearest city to me. So it sets us up in the right time zone. We'll click next. We'll just enter in a password to get started. Started. Once I can type the right keys on the keyboard and be sure to write this down unless you're using kind of a default one to start with. We'll deal with the email address later. Not going to get that one started just at this point. No, that's something that can be changed later on. It won't let you do that one. Okay. So, okay. Okay. That should make it happy unless it's going to check something. Okay. We'll deal with that later. Oh, we are going to call this PVE and it's going to interesting. It will not let us do what I wanted it to do. Well, all right, we'll just go ahead and make our changes now. I was hoping we could bring it up on DHCP, but obviously it made a liar out of me. All right. Does not look like a fully qualified domain name. All right. Well, let's just try this one. If that's what we, I'm going to be using. All right. It's going to be happy. Then reboot after successful installation. No, I want to have it tell me it's through. It's going to start the process here and we'll just watch and see what happens. Well, now I've got the USB drive we just burned Proxmox onto in the AWOW box we're going to use. I've got it turned on. We'll let it come up and then we should start seeing the install process. Bingo! Went to exactly where we wanted it to. So we'll say install Proxmox VE. And what's supposed to happen with this one is we're going to have the drive that Proxmox is on also be able to store some of the VMs, although eventually at some point I may add some outboard storage just to be on the safe side so that I can have some uh, storage to back up some of the VMs that are not currently running or the source ISO files. So we'll let this run and we'll just see how, how it proceeds. Should be pretty straightforward. I will let this come up on DHCP initially because I'm going to have to move this to another network and I don't want to try to hard code something in there right now. And we'll scroll down here and read the message. Okay, fine. We'll click on agree. And we are going to, it's going to automatically partition. That's fine. 
Please verify the installation target. Okay, that's what it should be. Automatic hardware detection, graphical interface. Sounds like a winner to me. Let's go ahead and get this party started. And we will select the United States, which works for me. And then we will select Chicago, which is a near city to me. So it sets us up in the right time zone. We'll click next. And we'll just enter in a password to get started. Once I can type the right keys on the keyboard. And be sure to write this down unless you're using kind of a default one to start with. And we'll deal with the email address later. Not going to get that one started just at this point. No, that's something that can be changed later on. Oh, it won't let you do that one. Okay, so. Okay. <sighs> okay, that should make it happy unless it's going to check something. Okay, we'll deal with that later. Uh, we are going to call this uh, PVE. And it's going to... Okay, well... Interesting, it will not let us do what I wanted it to do. All right. Well, all right. We'll just go ahead and make our changes now. I was hoping we could bring it up on DHCP, but obviously it made a liar out of me. All right. Does not look like a fully qualified domain name. All right. Well, let's just try this one. Yes, that's what we. I'm going to be using. All right. It's going to be happy. And then reboot after successful installation. No, I want to have it tell me it's through and it's going to start the process here and we'll just watch and see what happens. It took a while and I actually stopped the install because I thought it had hung because I was installing it on one subnet when I was actually going to use it on another. It may be just patience wasn't my virtue in that point. Once I restarted it, I ran along cables so I could get to the other network. It took about 20, 25 minutes to install on this little uh, AWOW mini PC I got off Amazon. But eventually it did reboot. And you see now PVE login and it gives you that port number to use. So we'll switch over here to my desktop. Okay, it says connection is not private. No surprise there. It's using a self-signed certificate. And username will be root and then the password that you entered during installation make sure you write that down and put it somewhere safe preferably a password manager so we'll click login now don't let this fool you this is not saying you can't use it this is simply just trying to get you to subscribe but that's it's just a matter of what repository and things that it can get access to so as you can see it's got everything all here i mean i'm used to using you know the commercial end systems vmware and so on so this was very straightforward to get into. This is just to kind of get you up and running and get thinking about how you want to proceed. Now I'm going to, because the amount of time this video is taken, I'm going to go about installing React OS and then Android OS in later videos because this one's already run long enough. And this kind of just lets you see what it will do. One thing I will tell you is of the two LAN ports on the AWOM Mini PC, use the left one. That's the one that's going to come up as default and have it plugged in while you're running the installation because it will sense that it's the active port. Other than that, we have a base install up and running. Explore a little bit of it, get on the Proxmox website, download some of the documentation, just kind of get a feel for it. This is going to be a little different from what you may be used to, but it's nothing that you can't get up and running with a minimum of muss and fuss. Join me in the next video when we'll start with React OS and we'll take the next step from there. If you're watching this on YouTube, you will see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. See you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.